שם אדוני מברוך אמרתי אדוני שלום אביבואן ברוך השם we have a new family joining us בעזרת השם and joining us בעזרת השם on for now a weekly basis ליאור, מליסה, ליה וליאו ליה and ליאו the kids are at a care with a babysitter with Eden Lior is a Lior is a partial given credit. Partial Yemenite, partial Yemenite. Bezat Hashem, Melissa, I hope will join us and eventually start the process of Gerut. Bezat Hashem, it's a serious family, and Bezat Hashem, all will work for the benefit of Kol Am Yisrael. Amen. So we're going to continue Bezat Hashem with the laws of Beracha. We've learned already that everyone. Wants to eat something, has to do bracha, blessing, before and after. Okay. Now there's different type of food with different blessings for each and every one of them. All right. If there's something that grows out in the trees, or is this, this is a, I don't know something you bake or you cook, so mm -hmm. forth and so on. Uh, so we all know that about the bracha that we do before we eat. It's easy. The question starts with what the beracha should we do after we eat? It's sometimes confusing for many people. So the beracha I do for that, raising my right hand. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehakol Nehiya Bidvaro. Amen. Anyone who said Amen, get one mitzvah now. Anytime you hear a beracha, you say Amen. And when I did the beracha, I get for every word one mitzvah, and all those who, did, who said amen replied amen. I got an extra mitzvah. So if we have ten people here, I got ten mitzvot. So you want to do brachot, blessings out loud, so people respond amen, and you get an extra mitzvah. Right now, we are less than forty days before before Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the day of judgment when Hashem judged the entire world. And He judged us as individuals as well. All the Beracha for next year, which is in month plus, that's it. Everything. God forbid, the Beracha and not the Beracha. If you be healthy, all that been determined based on what we do now, the whole year, and now. So you'll see many people doing extra mitzvot now. They want to collect as much as they can credit. So they come on Judgment Day with a lot of mitzvot. So the next year, this coming year, the Jewish year, will be blessed. With good parnasah, with good health, with everything you can imagine. So right now we're sitting here and collecting a lot of mitzvot for learning, studying Torah. But... Uh, what we do after? What do we do tomorrow morning? So we have to focus on doing extra mitzvot, extra brachot, blessing, everything extra. So it's not too late. It's not too late. Everything has been determined, I told you, based on the actions last year. We're still in last year. I would say uh, Sunday was 40 days. So I would say 47 days to go, uh, 37 days to go. Okay, any questions? Before I start, I want to, I want to uh, say, uh, thank you to the Medina's family for hosting the shiur. May Hashem bless you with all the berachot in the Torah. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so we've learned that the rule regarding beracha harona, the blessing after, some known as Birkat Hamazon, after eating fruits is based on the same principle as the rules for Birkat Hamazon. That is, as long as the fruits is eaten, the, fr the fruits eaten have not been digested, it is still possible to recite the blessing, but not afterward. That is, as long as the person does not become hungry again, he may still recite the blessing. So he ate, I don't know, grapes. A watermelon, whatever you eat. You do bracha after. The special bracha, bore nefashot, for certain fruit. And some, ala gefen, or ala eretz, we've learned that before. You can look in your sidurim, you see what type of food you do bracha after. Mm. So you forget. 
you're hanging around the house, you finish eating the fruit half an hour ago, and then you realize you didn't say the beracha after finishing completing the plate. Then as long as you're still full, you're not hungry, you can stay, you know, even three hours later. It's not too late to say the beracha. In this beracha, we're thanking Hashem for what He uh, blessed the world with fruits and vegetables that actually nutritious, give us nutrition and, and, and vitamins and help us maintain our life uh, on a daily basis. Make sense? Yes. Okay. What about wine? Most people, I don't know if I say most people, but some people, they say bracha before drinking the wine. Except the lechaim. Lechaim, I want to wish this, that this is all nice. We have to say berkat, berkat, special for the wine. Right. Some things, you know, I've noticed that some things that we do bore priya gefen, only on Shabbat or holidays. What about drinking during the week? They thought, no, it's not Shabbat today. It doesn't matter. You're drinking wine, you have to say bore priya gefen. Right. So there's a question. What should I do? Do I do the wishes? Guys, I want to wish the host for inviting us, saying this, bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah, whatever, and then say bar mitzvah, gefen, or say bar mitzvah, gefen, and then the wishes. We've discussed that before, I think. Words of Hashem. Exactly. So, as Elishama says, first of all, you say bracha to Hashem. Then you do the lechaim. You to hold the cup. You drink a little bit, and then say, guys, I want to make a toast. I want to do lechaim. Because blessing, who gets first? My creator. First of all, Hashem. You drink. Now, you can say the Baruchah for your, to yourself and, and uh, drink. Or if you want to gain more mitzvot, you say it out loud. So people respond, Amen, you get extra mitzvot. But Hashem talked to Abraham Avinu, no? Abraham Avinu, where was it? Abraham Avinu is... When, when he saw him. You bless first, he bless first Shem. No, uh, yeah, right, okay. So it was not with uh, Shem, it was with, you're referring to Abraham Avinu after coming back from a war when he defeated yeah, the four funny. kings. <clears throat> the four kings at the war yeah. defeated the five kings, they were really strong, and they took in captivity as a prisoner uh, Lot, his nephew. Mm -hmm. So Abraham Avinu with 318 people went to a war against hundred thousands wild tribes, crazy people. Uh, that all that they care about is killing, and I don't know, maybe cannibalism as well, or sacrificing human. Abraham didn't think twice. My nephew is in trouble, I'm going to save him. And he beat them. They got scared from Abraham Avin. On his way back, he went through what is today Yerushalayim. So uh, Shem, he's the survivor of the flood, He's the, the sons of Noah, came out to greet him. Nonetheless, Abraham killed his own descendants. And he greeted him and he says, may your name be blessed, Abraham, for doing that, and the dicks, and then the name of Hashem. Abraham was upset with him. What do you mean? You say, you greet the servant before you greet the king? First of all, you should say, thank Hashem that saved you. And then, from that moment, Shem, it was an old person, really old. He lost its uh, prof um, prophecy, meaning that he was a prophet, but he didn't go back to his descendants. He moved, the power of prophecy moved from him to Abraham Avinu ever since. He, he was, he was um, Kohen. Kohen, it was very uh, famous. Who Kohen Leel Elyon, as it says. Anyways for greeting human being before greeting God. There's another story, I don't know if you're familiar with in the Tanakh, in the Bible, in the book of Kings, Kings 2, with uh, a mighty king from Babylon that, um, his name is Sankari, he, um, he overslept I'm not going to tell you the whole story in a nutshell. What Hashem did, Hashem did a miracle to Hizkiah. Hizkiah was the king in the land of Israel. So, some, uh, so um, Hashem stopped 
you can read it in the, in the, in the Tanakh. Hashem stopped the sun from, from tilting. From tilting, right. For a few hours. So when Sanchev, the king, the mighty king, he conquered almost the entire world. He woke up, he said, hold on, what is it? Night here, day here, well, something is wrong. Oh, they didn't wake me up. Uh, the people rebel against me. Uh, so he called the servant and said, no, no, there's a God of the Jews. He holds the sun a few more extra hours for, uh, for the king of Israel. He said, whoa, there's a king uh, that great, that God himself stopping the sun. For Write him a letter, a letter of greeting and blessing. So they wrote a letter to the King Hezekiah and the King of Yerushalayim uh, under the God, so and so and so. They wrote the letter and it was a guy there that he's in charge. He was the scriber, the head of the scribers. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Years later, he became the king that destroyed the first temple of the Jews, our first temple. So he walked in and said, okay, fill me in. What happened today? So, oh, the, the messenger just left with a letter. Here's the copy. What copy? Show me. Oh, stop him. Stop him. Why? This is not the way you write a letter. First of all, it says to the God of the Jews and to his the king and to the peace of Jerusalem. This is how you write a letter. And he did, in order to stop him, steps. One, two, three. He was about to do the, the, first, the third step in order to stop him to the honor of God. The Midrash says, all of a sudden, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, the prophet, came down. He said, oh, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. It, was look, it looks like one of the soldiers there. He said, oh, don't worry. I'll take care of it. For giving the honor of Hashem, Hashem made him, Nebuchadnezzar, to become the king later. And he destroyed the temple. And this is why, by the way, we doing every day, three times a day, three steps back in the Amidah. When you do the Amidah. Why? Because the three steps forward that Nebuchadnezzar gave him the power to destroy Yerushalayim, we do three steps to make up, to do rectification, to fix this um, uh, sin um, uh, and, and take the power out of these evil forces. I'm giving you just this in a nutshell. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but that's, that's, uh, that's the idea. So first of all, you greet Hashem. Then you greet his servant. Every time, by the way, it says in the Kabbalah that many people, they're blessing the children and they don't understand why the Berachah doesn't work. So I'm blessing my child to be healthy, to be smart, to be religious, to be this. It doesn't work. So it says it's because of uh, uh, one mis big mistake, what they do they greet the children or bless the children before they bless God. So what should they do? Before you put your head, your hand over your son's or, or, or daughter's head, you should say, to Hashem. I bless Hashem for doing so and so and so. What I do, I'm saying, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevorach Adolam. That's what I do in the beginning of every class. I'm blessing God first. And then I'm saying to my son or my daughter, should be, you know, healthy, uh, uh, you get good grades. I don't know. You you be uh, smart. You get uh, whatever you need for parnasa. You need the. No, you should. Say, that's the beracha. You sing the beracha of the kohanim, mm -hmm. and then you bring your own special beracha to that blessings. Yes. Yeah. You start with saying. Beracha, one beracha that is including all the berachot in the Torah. It says, Yesimcha, Elokim, Kefraim, Echim Nasheh. Four words. It, it, it actually it folds under it all the great berachot in the Torah. Yesim, you want to write it down? Bebakasha. Yesimcha, Elokim, Kefraim, Echim Nasheh. And then I do the Berkat Kohanim, and then I do special about one need uh, speedy recovery, God forbid, one need this, now one need that. Shalom. Come on. So, as we learned before, the power of speech. Hashem gave us power in the mouth. Not only us, the Jewish people, everybody. Every person that can speak, can talk, has the power. And the Jews got an extra power. To say berachot. 
and God forbid curses. We have to be careful with that also. Okay, so there is there's wisdom behind all of these things that we mentioned. Okay? Any questions? Any questions, guys? You look like you're overwhelmed with the too much information in ten minutes. <laughs> okay. Probably it's good to know. Okay. It's good to know where it starts, everything comes from. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people have very powerful tools in their hand and they don't know that or they know they don't know how to use it. Yeah. This is why we learn here. The power of the speech, the power of the beracha, the power of tefillah. Since the destructions of the temple, uh, all the gates are closed except the gates of tears. If you cry out to Hashem, Hashem will give it to you. Some people, it depends. Some needs to cry for a whole week, some for the whole year. It depends on what you're asking for. But don't despair, don't give up, ever. Pray to Hashem for good things, and Hashem will give it to you. By the way, be careful for what you wish for. <clears throat> okay, remember we've learned about the Talmudic story about a guy that wants uh, one lady. Remember we discussed that? He wants that lady was crying. Hashem, give me the give me. He wanted to marry her because he knew her. He knew her family. He wished to be uh, to marry her. One of the great hachami, wise men, and uh, came accidentally to that city, and he is going to the shul, and he hears someone by the <coughs> ark crying out loud. So he called him and told him, "Listen, let me give you an advice. This is not the way to pray to Hashem. Ask once, twice, three times. Let it go." He was all day crying. No, Rabbi, you don't understand. I need a... <clears throat> Eventually, he got what we wish, and he got married. A year later, the Rabbi comes back to that city, and he sees the same guy that says, Hashem, please take me or take her. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't stand her. <laughs> this is what the Chinese uh, say, and uh, all said, saying, be careful, be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah. If, it, if it's good for you, Hashem will give it to you. All right. Um, mm -mm. Okay, uh, one less halakha in this regard is <clears throat> there's a question in the halakha if someone is, God forbid, fed through a tube, it doesn't really chewing it, it's not drinking it, mm -hmm. can't feel the taste of the food, mm -hmm. but it gets the nutrition, it gets the food in a way. Should he say beracha before they turn the plug on and when they finish or not? Is he still obligated to say blessing before and after or not? That's the question. Well, it says that when you eat, then you're satisfied. Which means give me another word for satisfied. It says I mean you could be full. You could be full. You enjoy it. Enjoy it. Thank you. If someone enjoy this world without saying bracha, thank you to Hashem, consider her as a thief. Right. You're stealing from Hashem. Hashem says, I don't need your money. Just appreciate what he's giving you and say thank you, that's it. How you say thank you? You say the bracha. If I would drink this coffee without saying bracha, I would consider her as a thief. It's easy. Three seconds, I did bracha, I got again mitzvot. On the contrary, it's okay. <clears throat> but now the person that has been fed with tube to a zonda, wasn't no, he doesn't enjoy the, 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 the tongue, doesn't feel the, there's no taste. To so they, they, they try to keep him alive, this is why they're feeding him. Yeah. Therefore, if someone is fed through a tube directly into his stomach, he does not recite any blessing before uh, his feeding, uh, feeding or afterward. Just learning this beracha, you can say, Hashem toda raba, that I'm eating normally. Thank you. It was uh, an unfortunate uh, case I've heard, I learned about last night, about a Jewish guy married with three children, little kids, that was driving his bike, a North Plainer. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, a truck came and went over him, and he was killed right on the spot. This person, his name is Yaniv, they're taking care right now of his uh, derangement. And we dedicate this to our class, to his soul, Be'ezrat Hashem. Mm -hmm. You never know. You never know. You have plans, but sometimes the plans are being 
changed or ruined by things. Uh, I don't know whose fault it is. It doesn't really matter right now. We should learn from this case a lot of things. First, to be careful. Secondly, that uh, nothing, uh, we take things for granted. You don't know what's going to happen the next minute. You can choke, you can choke to death from a pretzel. I think it was a present like that, right? The president mm -hmm. of the United States, I'm going to choke to death from yeah. a pretzel. You never know. There's a saying, there's a saying I try to translate it to English, I hope it makes sense, in the Talmud about <clears throat> camels that in the desert carrying the leather of other camels. And it says in the root, Harbe Gemalim Zekenot. Meaning, many old camels carrying the skin, the letter of a young camels. Young camels thought, I'm going to be, no. They're taking you to the slaughterhouse. And the old camel is, prepare yourself always. We wish to have Hashem to give us a long life, a good life, a healthy life. Yeah. And we can gain more and more if we being close to Him. How you get close to Hashem? With blessing, with berachot, with, with uh, mitzvot. Parnassah is good. It's not the only thing that is important. Hashem can take Parnassah just like that and give livelihood. Like they give, take and, and give. Yeah. A lot of tycoons that we know have troubles in the jail. Some of them make suicide. Uh, a lot of problems. People envy the rich people. Be happy with what the Hashem gave you. I would like to do one or two more. Uh, what the time? What time is it? Nine o'clock. Nine okay. So we continue to the next part of uh, one of maybe the most famous questions that we have all the time is we know that Hashem creates the world with what language? What language Adam and Eve spoke? Be more specific. Aramid. Mm -hmm. Aramid was came later. Lashon HaKadosh, thank you, Oscar. Lashon HaKadosh is, is very close to the modern Hebrew we have today. That was more and more developed in the... Uh, recent year by Eliezer ben Yehuda. Remember Eliezer ben Yehuda. Yehudi. Anyways, they spoke Lashon HaKodesh. Everybody, till Noah, they spoke Lashon HaKodesh. The holy language. The one that we use in the Torah. And read from the Torah. Is it still today when we come in the class, you can be like uh, alphabet. Yeah, it sounds it sounds Aleph Bet. It's Greek. It's Greek. It's Latin now. It sounds like. no, it's Greek. Greek. You speak Greek, no? They call it alphabet. Alphabeto. Alphabet. Alpha is the first letter, A, and then. What's the last one, Z? No. No, it's um, Omega. Omega. What is it? Omega. Ah, oh, Omega is the last one. Okay. That's what they say. That's alpha and say. Omega. Ah, okay. Now you get it. <laughs> so it's interesting why I'm saying it. Yes. Because what's the difference between Leshon HaKodesh? I'm going to call it Hebrew, okay? Leshon HaKodesh, Hebrew, to any other language. It's a major difference. What's the difference? The difference is the, one, the, more, the, the, the biggest difference is that one language was created by God and the rest was created by our people agreements on, over words and, and, and uh, I don't know, wise people or committees or whatever. And the language is still developing itself. But the Hebrew, the Shona Kodesh, was set up one time by God with all the wisdom and the secrets in it. And there's so many levels. There is a numerical level. And there is a counting of Letter with the first and the last, a lot of wisdom. You can create or destroy things just if you know the right code. Hashem created the world using words. 
ויאמר ויהיה, אשר ויאמר ויאמר, אשר השם created the world with words. Therefore in the world's DNA there is a power of speech. Now I want to say a blessing after eating. I understand that it has to be said, if you ask me, in Hebrew. But I don't speak Hebrew. I can speak English, Russian, French, I don't know, Good. Zulu. Am I, am I exempt from, because I don't know. And if I use my own language, obviously it won't be accurate. Did I fulfill the mitzvah? So the halacha is, it is permissible to recite birkat amazon, the bachavta, in any language, as long as the person reciting it understands the language he is using. If he is capable of reciting it in Hebrew, however, he must recite it in Hebrew, even if he does not understand the words he is saying. Such a person is obligated to study the meaning of the text of birkat amazon, the bracha after you eat or at least its principal parts. Make sense? Yes. If someone wishes to fulfill his obligation of Elkad Amazon by listening to another person reciting it on his behalf using the halachic device of Shomea Kehone, meaning Yusef Acha will listen and reply with Amen, it's fine too. He cannot fulfill it unless he understands Hebrew. Okay? So if you do that, it's fine. She can say the blessing using an English text. We can show it to her later. There is Birkat Amazon Benchers. Um, and most of the people in America, that's what they use. English, English text. Yes. There's also transliteration. Yes. How to pronounce the word, the word. in yeah. Hebrew using English letters. Like Birkat, she said B-I-R-K, it's transliteration. Yes. Okay. So can I say, should I say the bracha out loud or I can say it in my heart? Or reciting Birkat Amazon, the person must pronounce the words loud enough to hear himself. So you don't have to scream, but just enough. You can hear yourself saying the bracha, all right? If someone recited it silently so that he did not hear himself, he has fulfilled the mitzvah as long as he... As long as he actually uh, mouthed the words, meaning with his lips, moves his lips. Remember, we learned that many times. Everything we do has meaning in Shamaim in heaven. The way you talk, the way you walk, the way you respond, the way you sing with your eyes, with your mouth, everything has been taken under consideration for the judgment day, for good and for bad. The wife of the Hafez Chaim, many years ago, the pastor and one of the greatest tzaddikim, agreed with her friend that the first one after they die will come to his friend after 30 days in a dream to tell them what's going on in the other world. Mm -hmm. They were at that level. Her friend passed away, and after 30 days she came to her in a dream. And she said to her, listen, I can't really describe to you what's going on here in Shemaim in heaven. Because the words, are, 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 there's no words enough, strong enough to describe to you. But I can tell you one thing. Remember one day you and I was in the street talking. And all of a sudden someone came to us and said, How can I, where is uh, uh, Preston Road? So we didn't tell him anything. We just pointed with a finger. He thanked us and, and he went there. She said to her, to her friend, I can't even describe to you enough how much reward we got in Shemaim for helping someone else. But just by pointing a finger. Not to talk about talking to him, helping him, even taking him. Woo! Every action counts. You invite someone to... I didn't do anything. I offered them a place to sit, using my finger. You did the mitzvah of kindness, chesed. And Hashem will pay you, give you a reward for that. All right? Also, 
when you do Birkat Amazon or any Beracha, at least move your lips. Yeah. Okay, it helps with the intention. So you have intention, you focus on what you're doing, you're not just uh, dreaming. Um, we'll do one more Lacha. Okay, so what will be the what will be the case? This question I just got recently. Someone says, you know, Rabbi, I was in a party. Uh, we had a good food, the barbecue. I did the uh, mozi over a fruit. Wow, it was wonderful. Amen. We do it, birkat, netilat yadayim. We wash our hands. We did the mozi. Wow, it was fun. But let me tell you, Rabbi, after three hours with the drinks and the beer, I got my head. You know, it was drunk. When you're drunk, you start to talk, you know, a little, little, little foolish thing. You say, am I still obligated when I wanted to quit? He wanted to quit and go to a car and drive home, which is not safe. I don't recommend, of course. But he was asking if he was supposed to say Birkat Amazon. Well, it would be very hard for him to focus. Is he exempt because he's drunk or he's still obligated? You understand the question? Yeah. So there's... Uh... So, okay. So, so, there's a lot of hard, not, so please. Okay, but please note that the, what's the source of Birkat Amazon? It's a rabbinical law or it's from the Torah? Right. The Torah. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. So, we'll answer the question in a minute. When reciting Birkat Amazon, a person must pronounce the words loud enough to himself. Someone's right. Some, oh, I said already. Okay. If he did not even, I'm oh, sorry. If he did not do even this, and I'm moving his lips, it's all in his mind, and only read the words with his eyes and recited them mentally, most post in, uh, including Maran, Bet Yosef, ruled that he has not fulfilled the mitzvah. If he had, enough, had eaten enough to feel, uh, to feel full before doing this, he must recite the Katamazon again, this time actually pronouncing the words verbally. If someone is ill, is sick, and recited the Katamazon mentally because he was incapable of reciting it verbally, he has fulfilled his obligation. He's sick. Even if he becomes capable of reciting it verbally while he is still feels full from that meal, he must not recite it again. As mentioned above in Siman 183.23, it is proper to recite the Katamazon out loud since this enables one to concentrate better on the meaning of the words. Furthermore, it helps him to remember to recite Ya'alev uh, Ya'vo or Retze when those passages are required. If it's Rosh Chodesh or Shabbat, Yom Tov, reminds you uh, that, uh, that thing. Remember that we've learned that this is a segula, it's a marital parnasa. I don't know who are you who, who tried that last time, it is Bekat Amazon, but it's highly recommended. Give it a shot, try it. See how your livelihood, your parnasa, becomes much better. Just for saying Birkat Amazon from a venture, from a sidul, word by word, slowly. Okay, so let's conclude with answering the question about the drunk guy. If someone becomes drunk, he still may recite Birkat Amazon. This is so even if uh, he is now incapable of speaking clearly. It is best, however, to make sure to recite Birkat Amazon before reaching that level of drunkness. Um, if someone has reached the level of being as drunk as Lot, Meaning like he's, he's down, okay? He is considered totally mindless, and he is exempt from fulfilling any of the mitzvot. If he recites Birkat Amazon while in such a state, he must recite it again after he recovers his sober, severity and if he is still full from his meal. So if he wake up two hours later, maybe he's still in there. So the advice... And that's what many do, by the way, for Purim. Yeah. They do the meal. They don't drink during the meal. They finish the meal, they cut the mazon, and then drink. So if you sit with friends, uh, it happens almost every okay. Friday night. A lot of friends gathering. 
I know Baruch Hashem, our people here are, like to celebrate every Friday Shabbat. It's fine. So the best advice is finish the meal, do Birkat Amazon, bring all the treats later, the snack, the whiskey, the arak, the homemade arak. <laughs> He's promoting his. Uh, uh, promoting uh, yeah. I taste this, this good, Rabbi. It's really good. Uh -huh. It's very strong. Really uh, good. Yes, yes, I got it. And this is Arak Yeah, he makes it. Absolutely. Coming back from commercials, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you do the brachot after. I mean, the brachot over the drink. Shakon and drink as much as you feel that you can, and that's fine. And you already see the Katamazon, All is good. There is no bracha, by the way, after drinking this uh, alcohol. It's only bracha before. No. Bracha after, it's, you're exempt. Anyways. Any questions? Okay. Um, we'll, Bezrat Hashem will answer next week a question, for example. Someone that uh, started to do Birkat Amazon, and while he's doing it, he says, Hey, I already did Birkat Amazon 10 minutes ago. Should he finish what he started already, or should he stop right where he's at? Second question, someone is walking in the house and says, did I do Birkat Amazon or I didn't? He's not sure. We'll answer these two questions next week. On behalf of Ohev Israel Foundation, I want to thank everyone participating in this show and all those who support uh, Ohev Israel Foundation. We have a family that just arrived last night. Baruch Hashem, today we took care of it. We took the father and his daughter. It's going to be a major surgeries. Baruch Hashem, they're starting the process now. We were able to help them out with accommodation, with food, with a place to stay, with a car, with fuel, with translator, uh, MRI, doctor. It's all operation, let me tell you. And with a small donation that you can give one time on a monthly basis, it can help us a lot to... Uh, help these families and more families coming in. Mm -hmm. Just go to a Heavy Israel Foundation and ask, text me. I explain to you how you can support this uh, uh, great project. And all those who support uh, the needies and support the sick people, uh, it's guaranteed to them, as Rav Kanievsky said, that they will never have such a sickness, I forbid, or any sickness in their house. It's a great protection. Mm -hmm. uh, so go to a Heavy Israel Foundation, show us your support. May God bless you with all the barachot. And we'll meet you, Bezrat Hashem, next week, same place, maybe a little bit earlier. Shalom, shalom.